Ayan, from hala-hala, Rizal. Uh, Pastor, tatanong ko lang po kung pwede po ba maging leader sa, sa bayan o sa political uh, group ang isang pastor? Well, it will challenge your understanding of the pastoral ministry. If you are a pastor, and we're talking here of the preaching, teaching elder, uh, which is distinguished from one who is just a ruling elder who may have other involvements. But for a teaching, preaching elder, he must, according to 1 Corinthians 9.14, live of the gospel. So he must forswear other involvements. Again, 2 Timothy 2 tells us that. Uh, why would a soldier be involved in secular affairs? So, no, I believe that a pastor who is whose main task is preaching and teaching should go full time in the ministry and not get involved in political matters. Now, it is not true. In fact, I would encourage pastors to be politically knowledgeable. They know what's going on. So people who ask counsel from them, they can advise, but they themselves should confine themselves to the ministry. And no, I would not advise a pastor to be uh, involved politically. From PJ ARBC, where my question is when the Apostle Paul and Peter exhort believers submit to governing authorities. Well, we have a case uh, with Peter uh, when he said after the Sanhedrin, the highest governing local body in Palestine at the time, and they were uh, urged not to preach in his name. What did Peter say in answer? Acts 5.29, we would obey God rather than men. So we obey authorities, but they have their limit. Or as the common language today now is there is a red line beyond which they should not go. When they begin to intrude into my conscience, that's when I disobey. Uh, but for the most part, Christians should be fair with obedience and submission to the governing authority. Right, Barile? Uh, it's a fact that politics is one of the most divisive topic, even topics even for Christians. It's unfortunate that there are brethren who continue to exhibit fanaticism or blind following of politicians who have glaring and factual evidences of wrongdoing or wickedness. When you want to engage them in intelligent, factual, yet sober discussion, they just decline and prefer to avoid it. What is the position of the church? To brethren who continue to have such position of supporting the wrong which is contrary to the Christian teachings. Should we just ignore them? Well, not being judgmental is such position not bordering on hypocrisy. By doing so, does it not give a bad testimony to the church also? Uh, again, I am not going to make it a case of the Christian position that one is allied for or against a particular candidate. Will I consider unbelievers or uh, unruly Christians, those who are supportive of Bongbong Marcos, I think they are wrong, but I will not make this a matter of the Christian profession. They may have their reason for doing so. And uh, to make that a test case, I believe is politicizing uh, uh, the matter of church membership. Now, as long as they do not follow their candidate to the extent that they dismiss their uh, obedience to Jesus Christ. Uh, so I will not make support of a candidate for or against as an issue for obedient or unruly. Uh, I, I will see some other things for that judgment to be made, but not the candidacy uh, that is being supported by such Christians. Uh, 
from Joshua CFC, how would you answer someone who asserts the normative principle of worship and making the singing part of service like a concert is Christianity, redeeming the culture and offering to God the good parts of culture? Well, what we have, and when we worship God, we let him tell us how he wants to be worshipped. To say that I will worship God and he should accept whatever I offer him is arrogance to the highest degree. Uh, the idea that I can give to God as long as it is from my heart and God has no choice but to accept it and even appreciate it. To give to God what he has demanded and required. That's why the regulative principle states it as prescribed for the church. That means prescribed from the New Testament. Normative is saying as long as it is not forbidden, you can do it, even if there is no command. But prescription means when you show a prescription uh, at a pharmacy, let's say you go to Mercury and show a prescription, you cannot say... Uh, give me the medicine that the prescription does not say is wrong for me. So the pharmacist will only give you what is prescribed on the prescription. It must be written. Well, the same is true with worship. Why, we, why the Puritans have emphasized what is prescribed is because that is the consistent testimony of Scripture. The worship that God did not accept from the Old Testament, to not only that they did something forbidden, but they did that which God did not command. Conclusion, to be accepted, God must command it. And we see that in Mark 7, 6 following as a clear principle of the New Testament. So we're not redeeming the culture. The culture may be morally good, morally bad, or just pleasant or unpleasant, uh, but it's not Christian or unchristian. Christian is Christian people who have been converted, a Christian church, a Christian teaching, but there is no such thing as Christian music, or when you talk of culture, painting, dance, there's no Christian painting or Christian dancing, you can talk of pleasant or unpleasant, good or bad, but not Christian. Just as there is no Christian t-shirt, no Christian ice cream, just good or bad, no Christian uh, food, again, just good or bad. So there is no Christian culture uh, as believers, but Christian should be applied to people, to church, to teachings, uh, not to simple art. <clears throat> okay, uh, bow from GSCF. Itong verse po, ang kadalasang verse nila for a Christian president or officials. What can you say po? Proverbs 29.2, when the righteous strive, the people rejoice. When the wicked rule, the people groan. Well, righteousness here in the wisdom literature is not the righteousness of justification. It's the righteousness in terms of being wise in one's conduct of life. Wisdom literature is applicable to humanity, not simply to the covenant community. Uh, that's wisdom. This is wisdom saying <clears throat> is different from covenant promise. And we often misinterpret Proverbs in that way. Uh, wisdom saying is a providential built-in uh, mechanism uh, that works for people, whether believers or unbelievers, but with anomalies. For example, Proverbs 14.23 says, in all labor there is profit. Now that's providential. If you labor, you will profit. 
but with anomalies because some labor and because of the anomaly of the structure and society, they earn no profit uh, because of the sinfulness of man. That, that's wisdom saying. So don't use Proverbs 29.2. Look at the New Testament and show uh, there's Peter, Paul. They all say we must submit to the governing authority because they are God's minister for good. It does not take a Christian to be a minister of God for good in society. Between a Christian, a born again Christian, and there's a born again, the, there are born again Christians who are candidates today from four national posts whose platform I'm deeply disappointed at. Uh, I will not vote for them, but I love them as brethren. Uh, that's the right attitude. I'm not going to be con con someone competent who knows what he's doing, who can be just and with a track record to depend on, uh, but uh, not necessarily Christian. Okay, other questions? Uh, Arnel uh, of Huban. Uh, is a Christian, especially a pastor, making himself a campaign manager for a particular politician aligning with a political agenda, debasing the gospel. Yes, he is. Uh, that's not his business to advance the candidacy of a, of a politician, no matter how good he or she is. If he has chosen to be a pastor, he, he dedicated his life if he is truly called, he has dedicated his life to advancing the rule of Christ, not someone's candidacy. Now, he may vote for a candidate and he may even, uh, as a citizen individually, defend his choice, but that's not his office. Charlie Tago from Isabella. Anong po ang masasabi, anong masasabi niyo sa church na niririk ng pastor na magsuot ng t-shirt ng isang kandidato sa worship service. That's a shame. Uh, you, you call it worship service. Who are you worshiping? I mean, your, on your uh, shirt uh, emblazon the name of a candidate. Uh, that's shame. That's a shame for any pastor to do that as a requirement. Uh, that's not for the church to do. And in fact, not for pastors to do to impose on their members. Uh, I have advised some who do not know much of politics and ask for who, which candidate to vote for them. Uh, but for anyone to impose on my conscience and says that you are worshiping a right only if you vote for this candidate, that is a shame for a pastor. Danny. Uh, Pastor, uh, can we use the Deuteronomy 17 as a uh, pattern for how to choose a political leader? Uh, it, it, versus 16 uh, it, to 17 in particular. Yeah, it, it, it is about the characters expected of the king of Israel. And I do not think that the correspondence is exact. Uh, we may use that for the pastorate, for example, in terms of the integrity of his character, but in terms of political candidates, we do not expect the candidate to be a messiah. We do not expect the candidate to be a pastor, but we want the candidate to be just. So what I am looking for in a candidate is justice, competence, and the way to do that is look at his her track record, and those are the things I will consider. I go along with Martin Luther who said that uh, I would rather have a competent Turk. A Turk was the main opponents of Christian uh, lands of that time, uh, you know, the Ottoman, uh, the, the Turks. And uh, uh, he said, that I'd rather have a Turk to lead me who is competent than 
a Christian is incompetent. And I, I follow that position. Joshua again uh, with Putin's continued aggression against Ukraine and with his orders to attacking civilians has reached a point where Christians could oppose him in the same manner Don Heffer opposed Hitler. Well, yes, uh, in terms of uh, defending your land, if you are a Ukrainian, uh, and it's part of my, it's a part of our prayer in the church prayer meeting. Uh, we pray for the situation in Ukraine. We pray that Putin will not succeed. And I personally pray that uh, Putin will have his uh, uh, end of rule. Uh, now, I do not believe that the imprecatory Psalms can be prayed today in a situation where Jesus' mission is defined by John as not condemning the world, but to save it. So I do not believe it is right to pray for the destruction uh, physically of an individual. Uh, but I think it is right to pray for the end of rule of a wicked man. And I believe Putin to be the Stalin of our time. A wicked man and who does not care for the lives of people. So it is right to pray for the end of his regime. The last point. Let's close in prayer. A great God.